once in a while. How much do you add live, Johnny? And are you at living or are you just a guideline? <laughs> no, the script is really just a guideline for me. <laughs> no, but the, yeah, they, they, you know, the writers and the producers and the directors have been pretty good with, with letting me uh, throw in a, an idea here or there, as long as it's not sort of anachronistic and as long as it fits the, the, the code of the time. So, which makes my job a lot more fun. So, and before we start talking about some specific stuff that we saw in the clip, Christina, I understand that there were a couple of storyline ideas that actually came up last year at Fan Expo that were used in this past season seven, is that right? Yeah, no, it was interesting. Last year we sat on this stage and, and at the end, found, you, know, you guys were able to ask some questions and, and a couple of the questions that were directed to us were, were what is the backstory of all of these fabulous characters? You know, where did Murdoch come from? So Maureen Jennings, who is the inspiration for this entire series, had written a book, I don't know if you've read it, it's called Shipwreck. And it is the beginnings of how William Murdoch became the man he is. And it's set in the East Coast. And so one of the episodes this year will be what in effect are his origins. Um, and how, you know, someone sort of took him under his wing and started to realize this man had unbel an unbelievable brain and, and observational skills. So that absolutely came from, from the fans. And the other thing to say to you is that I got a note recently, well, I suppose it was about nine months ago, and someone said, did you realize Tom Thompson, the painter, was in Toronto around 1903 or four? So actually, just that little note from a fan, we've actually gonna have one of the episodes this year that will have Tom Thompson, the painter, from the group of seven. So I encourage you guys <laughs> yeah. to, to Feed, give us feedback on the series and what you'd like to see and are there ideas? Happy to take them. I just did the scene with him yesterday, actually. Oh, He's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Elan and, and Georgina, I understand that uh, we're going to see uh, Julia and Emily. Of course, we saw in the clip the suffragette movement is, is beginning at this time. So how important was it for the two of you to be part of this storyline where we're actually seeing you know women moving forward and, and Julia makes the comment about Know, some countries being ahead of Canada. So how important is it to be part of this storyline, you know, groundbreaking in Canadian history? I'm really excited about it. I don't know how Emily feels. <laughs> no. um, just because since we started the show, I kept saying, subjects, we need to do the subjects. I mean, I was sort of interested in them back in Australia. Um, in university, I did a play about the uh, British subjects and all the, the um, force feeding and the starvation and all that they went through. Obviously, we're not quite there yet in Canada, and, and the movement didn't change for quite a, a long time post what we're shooting right now. But So we're really dealing with the beginnings of the whole movement, but I think it's super important. I mean, I, well, the feedback we get from the fans is that um, the history and what's going on at that time is really interesting to everybody, and uh, particularly it's that time that time in the world for women was such, so drastically uh, different, and we love to see the, the changes that they had to go through. So I'm super excited to be doing it. Emily, how do yeah, you Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, I find it, um, I also, it just makes me look at my own life and what I have now as a woman and appreciate it more because I wasn't so educated on it and doing the show, I learned about a lot of things. <laughs> um, and I think that's a big part of it too, is appreciating what I have as a woman and what these women did for us and put in place for us. And so I think the story is really important for that reason too, that the women today who take things, not for granted, but we just have things and get to do certain things. So um, yeah, and those women were pretty kick-ass back then. So. <laughs> the other thing I think that's interesting about the show is, you know, it's a period show. It's set at the turn of the century, but uh, hopefully we try as creators, all of us, to make it resonate for a contemporary audience. So when, when I see that suffragette episode, I think of women who are still battling for rights in the world right now. You know, and so I think hopefully we're always able to find something that speaks to the contemporary audience about what's going on now. It certainly illuminates just how shocking it was that it's just in such recent history women didn't have a vote. I mean, I find it fascinating. And to see these characters that you become quite intimate with and who you feel very familiar with, to, to uh, you know, and you have this great relationship between um, Murdoch and... Julia, which feels very equal in so many ways, and only to find out that there's so, you know, without equality. And she's so much more sort of into, she's obviously more 
forward thinking that he is in a lot of ways, and that comes up with, well, especially, you know, when, when he, he um, you know, he's got a heart of gold, but feels like he needs to adhere to some of the Catholic uh, um, ideologies of the time, and, and opted to sort of pass that on. That better be for me. <laughs> it's, it's Yannick. Yannick's calling in. <laughs> Georgina, I understand that, that Emily uh, finds herself behind the, the wheel of an automobile this season. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. I got to learn how to drive a car from like 100 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I was actually pretty good. I was impressed with myself. I don't drive stick, but it was like driving stick. It was like a massive <laughs> stick on the side. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a Chitty Chitty Bang Bang kind of episode. <laughs> and I had, um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, I don't think I'm giving too much away to say that um, fans can look forward to the slowest car chase. Yeah. <laughs>
what's that like getting, you know, getting physical and doing a little bit of kung fu? And then I understand that it, that carries over to this season because the dockyard brawl looks as though you guys get into it as well. So talk a little bit about kung fu crabtree first and then tease. Yeah, that was a really fun episode for me. The guys, we had a really uh, uh, crackerjack team um, uh, led by Alan King who played who played my counterpart in that episode. These guys have all worked with, with Jackie Chan. They're, they're uh, a team based in Toronto, but they're, they're, they're world class. And uh, watching these guys just, I, I mean, I'm just sort of along for the ride. I get, I get handcuffed to the guy, and it's like, a, a, you know, the rush hour of Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sort of avoiding everybody as they do incredible flips. And it's always the guys getting hit who show more talent than the guys who are actually hitting. But they wanted to have, of, of course, me do a move at the end uh, that he's taught me. And uh, so I sauntered up to them as they were warming up one day, and I was like, you know, uh, when I was 12, uh, I did a few uh, Taekwondo classes. So, uh, <laughs> I think I got a spinning heel kick in my back pocket. Uh, so then I was like trying to limber myself up so I could get like, a spinning heel kick at the end. Which looked great in the end, right? <laughs> yeah. How's the groin injury? <laughs> 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 Uh, but yeah, as you can see, things get a bit physical in that. Wasn't that a great trailer, a great teaser? Yeah! Yeah! I should give, a, I should give a, a shout out to Rob Hurley, who's our, who's our uh, composer. He did the, um, our award-winning theme song, which is so good. Uh, but he does, he does all our music. He's, he's kind of a genius. And, and in that teaser, when all the violence is escalated, it was a very well cut between the two scenes. But you can feel when the music ramps up, you can sort of feel it in your stomach, and that's that's Rob Carley who does that. So. It's, uh, that's <laughs>